Hi everyone, I'm Fiona Palani from Zanina Raskororo, a 24-year-old lady. I'm the owner of Palmosh Poultry Farm, which is also located in Zanina Raskororo, in Shashoko village. I've studied BA in Criminology and Psychology and furthered my studies with Criminology and Criminal Justice Honours Degree. I'm currently registered with Rhodes University doing a social learning stakeholder engagement and I'm registered with the Circle of Global Business Women which, is, which we are doing it with Gordon Institute of Business Science. That is what I am currently doing, running the business and studying with two universities or two institutions. I grew up under a family of believers. I was raised by my grandmother while my mother was studying. And from primary, I've been helping my grandmother with selling snacks and the what she harvested from her farming. And that, I think it taught me to be a, a kid who's always willing to learn and also be able to count money, how to sell, how to make profit. That's, that's how I've been, I've been doing with the training of my grandmother. And in high school, I had... I had a friend who she also believed in investing. I'm the I'm someone who believes in investing. Who believes in investing? I remember when we were 16, we started a sort of uh, stock fair whereby we were saving to rent each and every day. That would help us at the end of the of the year after our examinations. And when I was when I was fifteen, I remember I start, I I joined a stock firm whereby I was saving my my social grant money. Um, I was saving hundred rand every month. I was giving my grandmother that when she goes to meet with the women, she should also save for me, so that I can get it at the end of the year. I can buy whatever I want. I started buying Christmas clothes with my money so from the age of 50 so that's what I've I've learned that investing is the key I loved investing in grade 12 savings which we used to apply in varsity yeah and I went to University of Limpopo in 2015 where I registered, I enrolled for BA in criminology, and in 2018, I enrolled for my honors. So that's my background in a nutshell and how I grew up. And also, I feel like uh, what I've been practicing at high school has taught me to believe in saving, to view a life that I think it's simple when you save and invest. And firstly, I think it also uh, made me think out of the box and also be open-minded that you do not just get money and spend it on chocolates or spend it with friends, but you should save and invest in something that you love and since i've started the business firstly i in in when i was 20 i joined forever living i was in network marketing i joined forever living whereby i was doing a network networking and marketing people to join the business it has taught me a lot it has taught me resilient consistency and it made me commit myself into what I want. I continued with network marketing. Uh, in 2018, I joined Longreach, which is also a network marketing business, whereby I used to recruit people. Well, I feel like this is what 
this is what has taught me to be resilient to be to be committed into what i've put myself into there are a lot of challenges in business but i i insisted that i want to be in i want to be counted in and i want to endure the pain and the challenges so that i learn and grow i'm never a person who wanted to be in a comfort zone which makes me uh, challenge myself every time i get a chance to challenge myself well that's how i started doing these things of hustling hustling and when i graduated in 2019 i i sat at home for like three months three months and i felt like i can't i can't continue to apply for jobs uh, with the money that i do not have how about i take my savings i had my little savings and i take my the money that i've been applying for and start something of my own well, I, I, I thought of it. I, it didn't even take me a, like a week to, to start the business because I was, I was so eager. I was very eager to start it. And that's what is helping me. I'm someone who believes in, in change. I feel like I'm the one who's, I'm the change I've been waiting for. I do not wait for someone to help me. I do not wait for someone to tell me what to do with my life whereby whereas i can do that thing myself um i remember in varsity i was a peer counselor for two years from 2016 2017 helping people with mental breakdown people who are suffering psychologically and people who are who, who, could, who could not talk to people there are people who are going through a lot but we as students, we do not, we do not pay attention to that because we all came there to learn. So I volunteered to be a peer counselor, to be part of the peer counselors, so that I can be able to recognize such people and be able to help them through their challenges. Uh, when we are when we are in varsity, we experience a lot of things. People lose their loved ones. People have break breakdowns. People fail. There are a lot of people. There are a lot of things that people face. So it is important for students like us who are willing and who have time to dedicate to such programs to join. So I joined the program for two years, which I've been saving there at Student Counseling and Development in 2018. I thought I should join something that will at least give me um, an income, a stipend. So I joined a computer lab, lab, whereby I was a lab assistant because I was studying honors and I didn't know whether I was going to get a bursary. So I joined the lab assistants whereby we were getting paid, I think it was 24 rand, 24 rand per hour. Well, I dedicated the money for my fees because I didn't know that I was going to get a bursary. But then in mid-year, I got a bursary and I was saving that money for when I, when I leave varsity because I didn't know what the world has for me when I, after graduations. And after graduations, yes, I sat for three months and I thought I should start something. And the idea of poetry came in mind and it was something that I would really really love and invest my time with remember you cannot just do something because you want money you should also do something that you could be able to wake up get out of bed with joy and go do it with excitement and go serve people so I chose poetry because I believed that women need to also need to be in in food security, food supply, food production, and be empowered. So me, I joined because I also wanted to be empowered and empower others. And there are a lot of challenges that I've faced through that. In my entrepreneurial life, I chose entrepreneurship because I believed that I can do it. 
Remember, you, we are given the power. God has given us the power. So it's up to you whether to exercise the power or not. So I believe in becoming whatever that I want to with the power that God has given me. That's why I chose entrepreneurship to be independent, to not rely on someone to give me salary, but to make an income for myself. And that has been working for me. It has been working and it has been, I was, I've been doing well, surviving with the little that I have. And um, I would say that I'm grateful for the Lord for that because there were a lot and a lot of challenges. We still have challenges and I don't think they will stop. As we are running our businesses, as we are hustling, we will come across challenges and distractions, but that's part of life. So I went through different things. I went through difficulties, but I believe that they built me. I'm the person I am now because of the things that I went through. And it affected me mentally and emotionally, but I thank God that they didn't break me or they didn't they didn't derail me and delay me in life. They pushed me to go more, to go further and to push more to greatness. And there are things that I had to learn and there are things that I had to unlearn and relearn. Well, I had to learn to be able to be patient with people, to do whatever that you want to do, no matter your character, because I'm someone who's very shy I'm reserved and I felt like I can be someone who sells things because I'm shy. Well, the people do not buy your your energy. They do not buy your bubbliness, but they buy the quality. They buy your service, how you treat them. You can be bubbly, but be rude. And you can be shy, but be kind and humble. So it is important to master yourself in that way that, okay, I believe that with the character that I have, I can be able to serve people. That's important that you have a character of working with people. No matter your shyness, you can still work with people. I have, um, I have, um, message or an advice for our youth with the current situation that we're facing in south africa which is uh, unemployment and also the pandemic that we've been uh, experiencing and we are still experiencing it well uh, our youth what i've realized about us youth is that we like depending on other other people, other organizations, other programs, we, we feel like the government is not doing enough with the issue of unemployment, but at the same time, we are not doing enough to be able to, to help the government to create jobs. Remember, if the government would like to invest in youth, they'll have to look at programs that can help youth to, de to be developed and also to be hired. If the government has funds for businesses and us as, as, as youth, we are not taking steps to implement our ideas, to implement uh, businesses that we want to and execute them, the government will not do anything. And another thing is that there are a lot of, of youth that are in this hustling thing, this entrepreneurship thing, but their documentation is poor. You find someone selling something, but they are not registered. They do not have a business. They are just selling, which is also the mistakes that we are doing. We are not cooperating with the government. We are not following steps and procedures to be able to receive a help from the government. So that's what is also making the, making the situation to be more tricky and 
to be difficult you you hear people saying that others received things received fundings received money but we didn't receive but if you were to check the documentation what is it that they are doing and what is it that they are not doing you will realize that these people even if you were to to help them they are not following their steps remember entrepreneurship if it was easy everyone will do it and everyone will be successful but it's not easy it's not for for the faint-hearted so when you enter into the industry you need to make sure that you are willing you are committed you have this perseverance to push and you will insist you will persist you will you will prepare for the challenges ahead, but you will not quit. It's important that you prepare yourself for the world and follow all the steps that are needed for you to qualify for certain things. And another thing is that our people are sitting with ideas that can, can come in handy in our economy, can come in handy in our rural areas. There are a lot of facilities that we we need but because we are sitting with ideas we cannot implement those we feel like we do not have enough resources we do not have enough capital to do some certain things but we need to start we need to reg register your business write your business plan get second-hand material and start doing something there are a lot of lodges around whereby someone with a swimming skill can go and rent their swimming pools on a weekly basis, whereby the person can teach people how to swim and they pay. There are a lot of kids who are drowning because they, couldn't, they are not able to swim. If someone could give that skill to someone, I feel like we can, we can beat a lot of challenges. We can be able to move forward as a country and as communities. And another thing is that when you are doing a business, you need to know why you are doing it, how are you going to do it, and what will you be doing. I think that's important. And by saying why, I do not mean that you want to be successful, you want to make money. That's obvious. We all are, we are, we are in it because of that. But the why, your value proposition, what are you adding value to? Who are you valuing? Are you adding value to? What is your target market? You are doing, for example, I'm I'm running a poultry farm which sells veggies as well because I I want to give my people a balanced diet. My customers deserve to have a balanced diet. Deserve to have a protein which is highly recommended and it's good for the body. And they need to also have an alkaline food which are our veggies. So. Having to give people a balanced diet from just the farm is something that I'm willing to do and also provide a food security which in our country it's it's lacking. So that's what I am doing and I am willing to do it for years and as I grow there are more ideas that will be coming. So these are the things that you should be doing adding value to people also through employment we are creating employment by just running our business which is also good so i'm saying to our youth do not deny someone's day someone a daily bread because you are sitting on your ideas it's important that you do not delay your idea you start with what you have wherever you are you will hear someone say that if I was in Jubek, I would sell, I would sell stock because things are cheap there. Like, why don't you start wherever you are with what you have and and sell a service, sell a product? You will, you, maybe you will find money to go to Jubek and buy stock or maybe you can relocate. But for now, start where you are. It is important. It is important to start where you are. And I would advise you to start with the little that you have. You have you have capital to buy data. You have capital to buy fishing that is being introduced. But you cannot start the business because you do not have enough capital. I feel like that's you are robbing yourself an opportunity to be someone great. You are 
denying yourself an opportunity to help people out there who are unemployed. You are denying yourself an income that will come and 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 cover those expenses that you are currently covering with the money that you have and you can still save you can still invest in other things and another thing that i want to, to say is that there are a lot of investors out there who are watching and they cannot invest in something that does not exist so start with what you have and people will come and help you people will come and support you there are a lot of strangers who are waiting to support you that's my advice i thank you and i believe that with the little that i've shared you can be able to go and start something you can have an, a courage to start somewhere as i've started i believe that if i can start something and succeed someone else can do it and i believe that if someone did it i can also do it so that's my advice thank you so much